First off, how do you study King Tut's DNA? Uh, well, we um, we didn't do this research on our own. We just reviewed um, uh, what we found um, at the Discovery Channel. So this uh, research was done by a team of scientists in 2009, but they didn't publish these results. Um, we just uh, found these results and we had um, knowledge uh, of uh, interpretation and we decided to publish it on our own because uh, they refused to do so up to now. So the descendants of King Tut, in this case, uh, 70% of British men, uh, 70% of Spanish men, and 60% of French men all, all belong to this genetic group? Yes, exactly. Yes, they share a common ancestor with these pharaohs. Well, talk about those common ancestors. Uh, where were they from? Who were they exactly? Uh, we think they lived around the Black Sea or maybe in the Caucasus, but we, we don't know exactly where they lived. But um, um, this this group was founded by one man who lived about 9,500 years ago in this area, around the Black Sea. But we can't, we can't tell exactly at this point of time. Is this surprising? Yes, yes, it is very surprising because uh, we didn't know that... Um, this uh, lineage of Tutankhamun came from the Black Sea or from Anatolia or the Caucasus because it's, it's uh, yeah, well, it didn't come from Egypt. And they, that, this was surprising for us, yes. Is it possible that because the group seems to be so large and includes so many, uh, for example, 70% of British men or 70% of Spanish men and 60% of French men, that kind of thing, is it possible that there's there are other famous pharaohs or other famous people that are in this group? Uh, yes, yes um, I think so. It's it's um, it's possible, uh, of course. Yes, as it's it's very uh, very big group. We sure have some some other royal um, uh, royal lineages which uh, belong to this uh, to this Hapla group. Is it possible that it's even outside of uh, the great Egyptian pharaohs and and maybe other people? Yes. Yes, we know um, we know of the the last Russian Tsar Nicholas II. He also belonged to the same Hapla group. He's also uh, one of the famous ones <laughs> who belonged to this group. And uh, what else is your research focusing in on now? Where do you take it from here? What happens next? Well, uh, we are we want to what we wanted to do with this uh, publication is to start the discussion because I think it's uh, very interesting to find this Hapla group in an uh, ancient pharaoh. And we would like to know how did this lineage come to Egypt. And we, of course, are searching for the living uh, closest relatives uh, to this lineage by comparing the profile to the tests we will do within our project. Well, we didn't mention the United States. I'm curious because a lot of uh, the people in the United States, originally they've come from Europe. Mm -hmm. So have you studied the United States as well? Uh, well, we, we often concentrate on the European countries because our um, the, the customers uh, of DNA companies from the United States do also want to know which European country they came from. Most uh, Americans from Europe have um, British or um, yes, uh, British or, uh, for example, German ancestry, so Western European, and I think they. They all, there's also many, uh, many men live in the United States with this Hapla group. Well, thank you for chatting with me. Thank you, too. That's Roman Schultz, the managing director of IGNA, the company studying the DNA of King Tut for the project. Are you a direct descendant of King Tut? You can find out more at our website, worldradio.ch.